Hey, so this time we're going to look at how we can sort of make like seesaw style paths. Um, and probably the first and most obvious way that you try and do this is putting like a little cube down and then um, duplicating that cube, stretching it out, making it so sort of like thin and long, and say so simulate physics on it. Which I suppose we'll totally do, which just not going to be very good, <laughs> is sort of the by and large problem. Like, so you can see it goes on there, you can jump on it. And it's fine, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but we're going to try and do it in a, a more interesting, fun way, by using what we call physics constraints. So I'm just going to take the same principle. And I'm going to get a cube, and this is going to be a path. You know what? We're going to just duplicate this cube. So I'm holding Alt and dragging it up. So I've got two cubes now, and I'm just going to stretch this one out like a path. Maybe that's too wide and too much. There we go. That's quite interesting now. Um, and we're going to use what we call a physics constraint, which is how we sort of connect different items together. So that, you want to get this as close to the middle as you can, so I'm just going to go to my top view up here um, and press F to find it. And we, actually that's not bad, that's fairly in the middle. Cool, and come back to my new view. Alright, now with this physics constraint on the right hand side we need to connect it, so I'm just going to um, say cube one using my pipette and then I'm going to use the pipette again it's like this guy and we can see this blue line up here but we actually want two of these we still want one on each side so I'm going to move that and hold alt and duplicate it so now I've got two physics constraints um, this one needs to be much more towards the edge there we go so I've got my two physics constraints they're looking pretty good I just want to change a few settings on these, so both select, so I don't have to redo it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically limit the amount of motion that they've got. So at the moment, the angular limit is free, which means they'll kind of just go crazy, which could work. Um, but if you want to sort of limit it to probably like say 30, I'll show you both examples real quick. So 30, oh, don't get to set this thing to simulate physics simulate so you see how 30 sort of locks the amount it'll rotate and it won't sort of fall any further than that point whereas if we had it at 3 um, just for the quick set of test It'll just go around and around and around and around. Okay, simulate wasn't a good example of that, but this will be. So you can see that's what free does. Um, so I'm probably going to limit it just to a, a bit, not so much the twist, but these ones probably about, I don't know, because I don't want it to spin like all crazy like that so maybe try 140 you can probably mess with these numbers and find what you think's best for yours and then the other main thing is because while this will work now and it won't go i mean it'll still go quite far um it's still went very far but it won't you know do that crazy spin around what we want is we want one more thing to stop it um to almost give it resistance and that's an angular motor. I'm going to give it a force of, well, let's try 800. So what that's going to do is it's going to constantly try and push it back to the middle point. And you see with like about 800, we almost get a few seconds to react to like deal with what's going on. In fact, 800 is probably too high because there's no challenge on it at the moment. Let's try. 500 real quick 
So you sort of want the balance of, it's got a bit of resistance, but you can still fall off it. Maybe five, maybe 500 to touch too much. Um, try 400, like I say, these are the sort of numbers you can mess with, but for the most part, that's how we create a sort of swing like pass. Ah, so that way it's got like, like I say, it's got the challenge, it's got the balance, um, and it all work based on the weight and the physics of the character. So when you're hopping across this thing, you've got to be quick. Um, I'm just gonna add a rope to it as well. Is it called a cable? Yes, it is called a cable. And I'm gonna drag a cable out. And essentially what this cable is going to do is just basically be a visual and let's just connect it to you, set the offset to zero. Like I say, you, this cable won't actually do anything, it's purely just um for the visual and um, there's a couple of like options in here you can like mess with the length if you want it to look a lot more slack I don't know why you would um, we probably want this to look quite tight you can, and again when it's quite slack you can see it's not got that many things so you can increase the amount of segments it's got but obviously the more of this that you've got the more computationally heavy it'll be so that'll do for there and I'm just going to um, Duplicate it again and set you to the next physics constraint. There we go. Now it's going to look like it's got a rope. Cool. There we go. Um, you can change the material as well when the rope and what the rope looks like, but I think that'll do for this one. You know, I think I'm going to lower the amount because they're still too easy. Basically, unless you forget to jump. Let's try 200. Well, it almost became like a catapult.